Oscar. I'm in my home, you know, just, just, just spending each day as I can. Have a really great, I uh, have all these great stories to share and tell with all my friends. Uh, that's, that's all my friends and all my new friends like you. All kinds of people, all kinds of people from all over the world, moms, kids, everyone. We can always learn something from every day and every story we hear. One sunny day, I saw Milo O'Shea standing by the side of the woods. He said he was going to hunt, and if I wanted to go along, I could. What is it, my friend, you intend to hunt out here in the sun? I asked Milo O'Shea, who replied, I'm hunting the wild harpagon. What is the wild harpagon? I've never seen or heard of that. I said, and Milo O'Shea looked back and smiled at me as he sat. I've never seen one either, my child. But I hear he lives on the highest hill. Will you know it when you see it? You bet I'm sure that you will. But how will you know the Harpagon even if it appears? And Milo O'Shea said, It'll be just as obvious to your eyes as your ears. Then I sat back beside Milo O'Shea to watch and to wait. And wouldn't you know, we saw a creature walking through a gate at the base of the hill and then down the dusty path toward us, where he kicked up enough dust to give us a dust bath. So I looked at this creature with green polka dots, and not just one leg, mind you, or even two, but a lot. Are you the famous Harpagon? Milo asked as the creature drew near. I am not by any means, young man, but I believe he'll soon be here. How will we know then when we see the Harpagon? Milo O'Shea asked the creature, who answered before he was gone. He's a bird who's very strong, except his legs are so weak, the creature said, and he'll carry the sky inside of his beak. And then the creature moved slowly away and walked on as we went back to hunting the famous fabulous Harpagon. Soon, wouldn't you know, we saw another creature walking down the road. And he waved to us once. We waved back to tell him hello. We're looking for the Harpagon who lives up on the highest hill, said Milo O'Shea. As long as we need to wait for him, we will. And we saw the creature had five arms, maybe even six. And he carried a yo-yo with which he did fancy tricks. I just saw the Harpagon go walking down the street, the creature said, standing there in the summer heat. Did he have green polka dots and more legs than one? Yes, the creature said. That sounds like the Harpagon. And then he walked on. And I was sure that Milo O'Shea had seen the Harpagon before he went walking on his way. I knew at least one of those two creatures had been the Harpagon. The only question was, we weren't so sure which one. And then, suddenly, as I looked ahead, I saw a creature who identified himself as the Dinodor. He was tall and big as any dinosaur in the world. And he had wings that as he walked, furled and then unfurled. You are not the Harpagon. Is that who you may be? Milo O'Shea said while the creature looked back at me. And the creature shook his head and just as he moved on, he explained that there indeed was more than one Harpagon. All these creatures on this road are different types of Harpagon. They appeared once a century, and then they were gone. So, in fact, I'm fairly sure that we finally saw this mythic beast, the fabulous flying Harpagon. Spoke to us, at least. We know one of the Harpagon will return to the highest hill. And Milo O'Shea has gone back to waiting. And for all I know, he always will.
friends, story time. Oh yeah, it's my favorite, uh, favorite, favorite, favorite. 